In the discussion that we had with the SAM team regarding transmutation in biology, I briefly mentioned that there was a study conducted by the US government into biological transmutation. So I thought it would be useful to run through what was in the report and what their findings were. So the first thing to note is that this report was carried out by the US Army Mobility Equipment Research and Development Command Unit. The purpose of the study was to determine whether recent disclosures of elemental transmutations occurring in biological entities have revealed new possible sources of energy. The report documents some of the findings from Kavran and proposes a mechanism whereby these transmutations might be occurring. The report concluded by stating that elemental transmutations were indeed occurring in life organisms and were probably accompanied by a net energy gain. The report opens by documenting the historical discovery of biological transmutation of elements and covers many of the names I have discussed in the video on biological transmutation of elements. The main investigation was split up into a number of sections. The first part looks at what the signs of transmutation might be. This started with an examination of a change in net weight. The study limited itself to fusion reactions where the difference in atomic weight would only be one. These included sodium, potassium and manganese. For sodium, the weight differences were as follows. This would lead to a very small loss of weight for each sodium converted. Potassium would see a larger loss and manganese the greatest. For each, the energy developed would be as follows. Sodium 7.29 mega electron volts, potassium 8.35 mega electron volts, and manganese 10.18 mega electron volts. But how much energy is required to initiate these nuclear reactions? Back in 1932, it was known that alpha particles of energies between 5 and 7 MeVs from radioactive elements could cause atomic disintegrations. The paper then discusses an experiment conducted by Cockcroft and Walton who fired protons at lithium targets using an electric field. At the bottom of their equipment, the proton had a kinetic energy equal in electron volts to the potential in volts at the top of the tube. By placing the target at the bottom at 45 degrees, they discovered that disintegrations of some of the lithium atoms into pairs of helium nuclei ejected almost in opposite directions occurred with only 120,000 volts. And this shows that it does not require as much energy to initiate some of these nuclear reactions. What could be a possible location for this energy development within a biological cell? The mitochondria is a cylindrical shaped organelle and is known to be the primary site for energy production in all living cells. Some cells have as many as 7,000 mitochondria in them. The mitochondria is divided into compartments in which various reactions take place. Adenosine triphosphate, or ATP, is now recognized as the molecule most involved in energy production in the mitochondria. When complexed with magnesium ions, it forms a cyclical ATP and proceeds through a series of reactions which produce energy. The magnesium ion is considered to be the catalyst for these reactions. One phosphate group after another splits off so that the resultant structure becomes a diphosphate, or ADP, and then a monophosphate or AMP. The phosphate group hydrolyzes, and the energy of hydrolysis for each reaction is 7,500 calories. The D-ribose then split off and proceed through a long glycolic decomposition cycle to yield further energy. The cyclic MgATP thus breaks up completely and is rebuilt through a series of chemical reactions. None of the decomposition and rebuilding cycles is yet completely understood. When we examine the mitochondria, we find the following ions present. Sodium, magnesium, potassium, calcium, manganese, and iron. These are the same elements that were found by Kavran and others to be involved in biological transmutation of elements. We also find copper and zinc, which differs by only one proton. H plus and OH minus ions have been produced and are maintained in separate compartments. Conversion of copper to zinc is also accompanied by a loss of mass and therefore a production of energy. The net result of the many reactions occurring in the mitochondrion is a flow of electrons. This flow is oscillatory in the MgATP crystal. The complete conformational structure of MgATP has not been determined yet. A key problem has been the function of the magnesium ion. 
Kothakar et al. made a study of changes in the electronic charges and energy distribution in ATP and ADP after the incorporation of magnesium ions. They hypothesized that even though the magnesium ion is not absolutely essential for enzymic action, its presence facilitates the action by modifying the charge distribution. The most likely position for the magnesium ion is symmetrically between the three phosphorus atoms. The binding between the magnesium ion and ATP was considered mostly ionic in nature. No detailed acceptable information is available regarding the crystalline structure of MgATP. In the paper, they then go on to propose an alternative mechanism for the energy production. They examined MgATP to identify if there was an alternative means of energy production which would encompass nuclear fusion reactions in accordance with a recognized nuclear theory and practice. The principal method of producing nuclear reactions is by an accelerator, either linear or cyclic. They go on to hypothesize that the structure of MgATP is such that the molecules are situated one on top of the other, so that the magnesium ions form a continuous chain. The arrangement of this structure would look something like this. The whole structure would form a helix. The net effect would be that H plus ions would follow a helical path. Dipoles have been found to be energized by unsaturation in the ionic structure, binding with metal ions with each dipole requiring one unsaturation or double bond. This means that the unsaturation in the adenine molecule, comprising four double bonds, should be enough to energize the three dipoles in the phosphate groups. The current formed by the electron flow in an oscillatory fashion from the magnesium ion to another must of necessity be accompanied by an oscillatory magnetic field. This could easily extend out to the perimeter and accelerate H plus ions to a relativistic speed. It will be guided in its path by the dipoles. This means that the unsaturation in the adenine molecule comprising four double bonds should be enough to energize the three dipoles in the phosphate group. An interesting feature we see in this configuration is the location in the adenosine heterocycles. They sit directly on the circumference of the circle formed by the acyl oxygen dipoles and 180 degrees apart from each other. When a conjuncted ring molecule is placed in a magnetic field, its electrons are caused to circulate. They generate induced secondary magnetic fields. This means that this ring must have a rotating ring current only when exposed to a magnetic field. Because of the puckering effect of the D-ribose, the ring slopes and skews downwards towards the perimeter. Its induced magnetic field must therefore have a component that is capable of exerting an acceleration force on the H plus ion as it passes by. In essence, this structure demonstrates all the principles of a cyclotron particle accelerator, but on the scale of a molecule. It has an oscillatory electric field. This is a continuous flow of electrons in the mitochondria. The current oscillates as it flows through the chain of magnesium ions. The electric field will also oscillate with this. It has the presence of an ion to be accelerated. Here it is the hydrogen ion or proton which is found in one of the compartments of the mitochondrion. Auxiliary control and propulsion of the hydrogen ions by dipoles. An H plus ion introduced between the components of the sandwich would be attracted by an energized dipole and pass from one dipole to another around the helical circle. Induction of the ring current in the adenine. This oscillating electric field induces an oscillating ring current in the adenine ring of the molecule. As the hydrogen ion passes under the ring, it is attracted by the magnetic field accompanying the ring current and accelerated to a very high speed. This will soon approach relativistic speeds because the ring current is probably also rotating at such speeds. This in turn would impart enough energy into it so that it can penetrate the nucleus of an atom and convert it to an atom of the next highest number. They finalize by outlining what the evidence is to support their hypothesis. The net loss of mass when going from one element to the next represents a net amount of energy released. Firstly, the mitochondrion are well known as the location of energy production in the cell. The presence of ion pairs, sodium magnesium, potassium calcium, and manganese iron gives strong support to this idea. Moreover, the additional pair copper and zinc they discovered also supports this. These are the only ions to have been discovered within the mitochondrion. 
An examination of the structure of ATP indicates that when the molecules are placed on top of each other, the magnesium ions in the center group resemble a working model of a cyclotron on a molecular scale. The Mg ATP molecule itself is also a store of energy, and when it is taken apart, this releases energy. The question of the primary purpose of the transmutation is of considerable interest. Most of the research conducted by others would suggest that this is for maintaining a balance of certain elements. In the human body, it is evident that the health would be considerably impaired if the transmutation process was used solely for the energy production and there would be a steady build-up of elements and the body can only tolerate so much sodium, potassium, magnesium, calcium and other such ions and the quantities of these are very small. The report ends with this final conclusion. It is concluded that the elemental transmutation occurring in life organisms are accompanied by a loss in mass representing conversion to thermal energy, and that such energy probably is a net gain when compared to the amount required to affect the transmutation. So what can we take away from this? I find the concept of this mechanism very compelling. I think it is important to make a connection in terms of energy required to cause the transmutation. In the paper, they refer to the experiment where the proton was accelerated into a lithium slab. Here they saw that much less energy was required to break apart the lithium. And remember, they were breaking it apart. Here we are considering simply adding a proton. Now we've also discussed how in the experiments with transmutation, they all involved the metal and electricity. These are precisely the ingredients we have here. So we may not require relativistic motion of these hydrogen ions to achieve the transmutation. One other question is how can this step be reversed? In some of the biological experiments we saw the removal of a proton to move to the previous element. Could this mechanism also accomplish this by the reversing of the current? Could it somehow remove a single proton? Or is it possible to dislodge one of the protons by causing it to absorb an electron and therefore that becoming unstable and ejecting both the electron and the proton? The mechanism for both of these may be linked to something that we find in both lightning and quasar beams, the production of neutrons, but this is something that we will cover in the near future. As always, be brave, be curious, the truth is waiting for us. Until next time.